Hi, I'm Maya. What is your name? That is a wonderful name. This is a story about a girl named Emily who wants a hamster. Before her dad lets her get one, he wants to make sure she knows what every animal needs to survive. Her dad helps her understand that all living things need food, water, air, and a place to live in order to survive. Are you ready to hear the story? Great! Let's begin. Emily and her dad were visiting the pet store. While there, Emily saw a cute little hamster. Dad, can I get a hamster? Emily asked. I don't know, Emily, her dad replied. Taking care of a hamster is a lot of work. Do you think you can give a hamster everything it needs? What does a hamster need? Emily asked. Well, think about the things that you need to survive, Emily's dad said. Emily thought about it and said, Well, I guess I need food to eat and water to drink. I also need air to breathe, clothes to keep me warm, and a house to live in. That's right, Emily's dad said, and animals need many of those things. Emily's dad explained that every animal needed four basic things to survive. Air, water, food, and a place to live. Without those four things, it is difficult for animals to survive. But did you know that animals are not the only things that need air, water, food, and a place to survive? Emily's dad asked. What else needs those things to survive? Emily asked. Everything that lives, her dad said, including plants and fungi. But plants and fungi don't breathe, said Emily. How can they need air? Her dad explained it to her. Humans and animals breathe in air. Air is made up of several different parts, just like your trail mix has lots of different things in it. The most important part of the air that humans and animals use is called oxygen. The oxygen flows in the animal's blood and helps its body work correctly. So then, how do plants and other living things use air? Emily asked. Plants and some other living organisms use the part of air called carbon dioxide, her dad explained. They use the carbon dioxide in the air to create sugars to help them grow and to create oxygen for animals to breathe. What about water? Emily asked. Things in the desert don't need water, she said. Well, said her dad. Some living things need less water than others, but they still need water in order to live. For example, plants and animals that live in the desert are used to living without a lot of water. Most plants and animals use water to help them stay healthy, Emily's dad continued. Did you know that plant and animal cells are mostly made of water? When plants and animals drink water, they make sure their cells can keep working. What about fish? Emily asked. They don't drink water like we do. Some living things use water for other reasons, her dad explained. For example, fish in the ocean need water to help them breathe. There is oxygen in the water. Fish use their gills to use the oxygen from the water to breathe. Okay, so I can see how they all need air and water. Emily agreed. But do all living things really need food to survive? Plants don't eat, do they? Actually, plants make their own food with water, air, and energy from the sun, explained her dad. This is done through a process called photosynthesis. Plants are called producers. So the plants make the food and animals eat it. Emily said. Yes, animals that eat plants or other animals are called consumers, explained her dad. Is that all the groups there are? Emily asked. Nope, 
said her dad. There are three groups of living things, producers, consumers, and decomposers. Decomposers get their food by breaking down dead plants and animals. So now I know producers make the food they eat, consumers eat food made by others, and decomposers break down dead plants and animals to eat, said Emily. But why do living things eat? The food plants and animals eat provides nutrients, her dad explained. The nutrients help their bodies stay healthy and keep working. So if an animal does not get enough nutrients, Will it become sick and die? Emily asked. Yes, her dad replied. Well, where do animals find their food? Emily asked. The place where an animal lives is called its habitat, and this is where an animal finds its favorite food, her dad told her. So if an animal is taken away from its habitat, it may not find enough food to eat? Emily said. That's right, said her dad. And plants also cannot make enough food to eat if they are not in the right habitat. What else do animals find in a habitat? Emily asked. In a habitat, plants and animals also find shelter, her dad explained. Shelter is important because it protects plants and animals from the weather and predators. I remember seeing bird nests made from sticks and leaves, Emily said. That's right, her dad said. Some animals build shelters, and there are other animals, such as snails, that carry their shelters with them. So do you think you can give a hamster everything it needs? Emily's dad asked. I think so, said Emily. Emily picked out the hamster she wanted. Then she picked out a large cage and some soft bedding, a water bottle, a food dish, and some hamster food. Emily took her hamster home and set up its cage. Every day she made sure her hamster cage was clean and that it had plenty of food to eat and water to drink. She wanted to make sure her hamster had everything it needed to survive.